my wonderful and beautiful people out there. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you come back again, thank you and welcome again. I'm Lady Starfire and today I want to talk to you about psychic abilities. Okay? So, yes, I still have on my cast. Yes, I still look like, yeah, but hey, I guess y'all love me anyway. You wouldn't be here, right? So, all right. I do have my notes because, once again, I'm trying to keep myself focused and make sure that I cover everything and don't run off with too many little shiny squirrels and things and mountains and whatever that I tend to get off on. And I have these to help keep me brought back, okay? So, anyway, um, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, I hope this will help you to understand about different psychic abilities, all right? Uh, psychic gifts, um, powers, whatever word you want to use for it, okay? So this is for those of you that have them, those of you that want them, uh, those of you that are trying to understand them, okay? This video is for you. So if you've got any psychic abilities, want them, trying to understand them, click that like for me down there, please. If you haven't subscribed, please click that and the little bell so you'll be notified every time I put up a new video, okay? And leave me some comments. I love comments. Um, I like for you to let me know maybe what psychic abilities you have, okay? And what you um, may need help with if you do. Some kind of comment you make might help somebody else, okay? And don't forget to share my videos. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that need it, okay? So, anyway, all of these things help keep me, you know, making videos for you, all right? So. Okay. In case I didn't say it already, I'm Lady Starfire, and I'm here to bring you more witchy tips. All right. The definition of psychic abilities is, a psychic power is the ability to perceive cues and information from the non-physical world. Okay? So that's the actual definition of psychic power, psychic abilities, psychic gifts. All right? It's also known as the sixth Okay, six is in the number six, sixth sense. Because we, you know, we all, all know our five senses that we have, seeing, hearing, feeling, all of those things, right? So this one is the sixth one, which is our psychic center, all right? So there are various different ones, okay? We have what's known as the clairs, okay? So there is clairvoyant, all right? which means to see. It's also known as the psychic ability to gain information about an object, person, location, or physical event through extrasensory perception. Okay, that's the actual definition for it. So, you know, it's kind of like in the video I did on empath, okay? You know, it's that just knowing thing, okay? Uh, whether you feel it, you see it, um, you know, uh, it's usually, you know, I, I refer to clairvoyant as seeing, okay, quoted here, seeing. It's not necessarily seeing with these eyes, it's seeing with this eye, okay? The third eye, the one that sits right there, okay? The one that everybody wants to open all the time <clears throat> without worrying about balancing all the rest of them. Nah, not a smart thing to do, okay? Blowing that one open when the rest of your chakras are not balanced, I don't recommend it. Go watch the one on chakras, okay? Put it there. All right, so. Basically, clairvoyant means that you receive information. Okay, so I grab this rock. Okay, I might all of a sudden see the person that last touched it. I might see the person that harvested the rock, that polished the rock. I might get a feeling of, you know, somebody's energy that has touched this. Okay. I might feel what they were feeling. Maybe this wasn't for them, so therefore it was like, oh, oh this is not my rock. Oh, okay. Yeah, dramatic. But I have seen people do that. Okay. You know, because there's one for everybody. Um, you know, I might get a feel a location or be told a location of where this rock came from. Um Maybe somebody was in a wreck, you know, where they were 
harvesting this or shipping this or whatever, and I might get something on that, okay? It all depends on what all touched and was retained in this rock, okay? Um, same thing with this piece of wood here, okay? Um, that's why there are people that don't like to touch things, okay? Because they see things, all right? I can't remember what the movie or series was, but he always wore gloves. And <clears throat> when he needed to see what something was, uh, he would take his glove off and touch something, and then that he would see everything that happened, okay? And yes, that can happen. Some people's gifts are that advanced, okay? It's not just TV, okay? Yeah, they make it. Maybe it's a little over the top sometimes, but it is still a possibility, okay, that people have such gifts. There are times I can hold something and feel something. My husband picked up a bottle. We were checking somebody's property one time, not thinking. He reached down and picked up this bottle to see if he picked up anything on it. And I saw this with my eyes. His left arm went gray. And he couldn't breathe. You know, he felt like he was having a heart attack until he got the bottle out of his hand. Turns out the bottle was the woman's father's. I think it was a liquor bottle, beer bottle, something that he had left out there. And we, when we told her, you know, said, you need to check on your dad. And it actually worked out because she got to him just in time to get him to the hospital when, as he was having a heart attack. So. You know, it does happen, okay? And like I said, I saw his arm go gray myself. So he it wasn't just him seeing it go gray. I saw it. You know, that was a death warning, okay? And yeah, it can be very scary, all right? For those of you that haven't had it happen, not don't understand it, whatever, it can be very scary. I've held things to be able to feel things about people. doesn't always work. It depends on the item, but it can, you know, it wasn't ever to that extreme, thank goodness. So, uh, I've been lucky on that so far. Maybe I'll just Martin didn't hold things. But I, I have felt, I had somebody one time wanted to know if somebody was on drugs. I held their bo the beer bottle that they had. I started describing what I was feeling because I don't do drugs. I had no idea what it was, but that told them what it was that the person was doing. Because uh, it just ugh, made me sick. Didn't like it at all, okay? So, but <clears throat> that is your clairvoyance. All right. Um, we have clear audience. Now, now that is the hearing. This is what I do when I'm reading cards with my guides. Okay. My guides are over here and they're talking to me. I feel like I hear it with this ear, but I know I'm not. It's the information just comes in here. All right. But I hear the words but it's not the same as what you're hearing me right now, okay? It's different, but the clear audience is a hearing thing, okay? It's where you hear your guides, your spirit guides, ghosts, uh, other spirits, whatever, okay? You hear the information, all right? Um, and, and people look at you like you're crazy because you're not really hearing it the way, like I said, you're hearing me, but to you it will feel like it because it's like the information is just in your head all of a sudden you know and you feel like you heard it okay because that's you know that's the way you perceive it all right so once again we call that clear audience all right um and this one's oh, hang on this one's harder for me to say clairsentience okay or clairsentient all right Clairsentience, the ability to perceive emotional or psychic energy that is imperceptible to the five standard senses. Okay? Okay. Sorry. All right. So what this means is it's information that you're getting that you didn't see. You didn't hear, okay? You didn't touch it. You didn't use any of those normal five senses, okay? 
it's just there, all right? Um, it's these energies and emotions, all right? Um, it's not necessarily the pictures or the words. It's just, um, it's kind of like when we talk about somebody's aura, okay? That energy field that's out here. And it's just like, you know, sometimes it can be overpowering, you know, because you just poof, hit with it, okay? Um, you know, that's that energy. Or you get just overwhelmed with emotion, all right? It's kind of in that empath thing, too, all right? All of these kind of fall within the empath that we talked about. Um, but, you know, because empaths can have all of these. So, anyway, but it's just, you just get overwhelmed with emotion that is not yours because you're just sitting here. I'm sitting right here. I'm minding my own business. And all of a sudden, there's this whoosh wave of emotion that hits. And I'm like, oh, I want to cry. What's the matter with me? You know? Or I want to go hurt somebody, or I'm just angry, or, you know, whatever it is, okay? You're just bawling your eyes out. And you have no reason to know why, because you were just sitting here minding your own business. You weren't talking to nobody, so there was no, nothing that the other person said that caused the emotion. There was no memories, nothing. It was just this wave that just blasted you, okay? That is this ability, okay? The clear sentiments. Because you are just, you just get hit with waves of energy, emotion, or whatever, okay? That's where you have, you need to be able to go, whoa, okay, let me ground here a minute. There's some wood, there's some dirt, some grass, you know, whatever, okay? And go, okay, that's not mine. You know, having one of these, grab a hold of that rodentite and hold on to it, okay? And kind of ground that stuff out. Look around. You'll probably see if it's tears and stuff. Look around. You're going to see somebody over here that is crying. Maybe they just got some bad information. Maybe they just lost somebody. Maybe they just had a bad breakup. Whatever it is. But there's this emotion, okay? If you're a person that likes to help people, you might want to walk over to them and say, is there something I can do for you? Uh, do you need a hug? Okay. Uh, I understand that you seem to be feeling some really tough emotions right now. Is there, you know, would you like to talk? If not, it's okay. I'll leave you alone. I just wanted to be here to let you know that you're not alone. Okay. There's all kinds of ways of handling this um, that's not intrusive to the other person, but especially if they're sitting there alone, you know, they may need somebody. They may need a shoulder. They may, may need somebody to scream at. They may need somebody to cry to. You know, they just may need somebody to know that they're not alone. Okay? So, you know, these are things to work on with this, all right? Okay. The last of the Claire's is Claire Cognizant. Okay? Now, this one, I'm going to read you the, this to get the exact meaning out for you. You just know it. Okay? It's known as clear knowing. It is a psychic ability that involves you just knowing information you couldn't possibly no normally okay that means i didn't get emotional i didn't get hit you know with some energy that made all the hair stand up on my body i didn't see anything i didn't hear anything i just all of a sudden know okay um uh i've known people that had to deal with this uh i won't name names but this person hated going to a hospital, hated dealing with a lot of people in general because, especially at a hospital, that one won't make it through the night. That one's going to die tomorrow. That one's going to go home. Da, da, da. Okay? Just know the information. Didn't want to know the information. Couldn't do anything with the information. Okay? But that's what 
clear cognizant is, is you just all of a sudden know information that you have no reason to know. Okay? Um, well, it's like my daughter, somebody walks in that's pregnant, not, don't have a belly bump, you know, no baby bump yet, no anything, and she knows you're pregnant. Okay? Um, so, in the, in, and even though, because if they were big and been pregnant for a while, that would explain pain, okay, because it's there. But this person, hell, they may not even know they're pregnant. But she does, because she just knows it. Um, so sometimes we just simply get information if we have this particular ability, okay? It can drive you crazy, all right? Because it can make you go, why do I know all this stuff? Why, okay? Why me, okay? You will become the poster child for why me. Because a lot of times you either can't say anything about it, don't necessarily know who it belongs to. Um, it's just there, okay? Because you ain't going to go walking through the hospital going, hey, by the way, you're going to die tonight. You know, you're not going to do stupid crap like that. At least I hope you wouldn't. It's just that you just get information from the universe. Okay? And you have to learn how to deal with it so that it does not drive you crazy. It doesn't put you into a depression. It doesn't put you into an anger state. It does not affect you, okay? This one of the Claire's is probably the hardest one to have because learning a way to control that one is really difficult, all right? Um, lots of grounding, lots of meditation. Um, maybe writing it down so it comes out of here and you you at least did something with the information. You have to figure out what works for you, okay? You might even do the little thing that I taught uh, in the empath so that maybe you, you know, that might help you. I don't know, because if you're that good, you're going you're gonna to go fly right through the cards, okay? So, um, just know that you're not crazy um, and that you have to figure out how to put this into the right perspective of just knowing things, okay? Uh, journaling can be a great one for that, okay? Just writing things down, okay? Always write down the date, all the information that you got because you may or may not know who that information is for. And if it's a situation that you can't give out the information, holding it inside can wear on your last nerve, okay? So have your journal and just write it down. So at least you, it's coming out of here and going into there, okay? And then if something comes up at some point that you need to get the information, you have it exact as it was given to you at the time, and you can hopefully not have to just remember it, okay? So let's see if that helps, all right? All right, sorry, been doing a lot of talking. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're going to move out of the Claire's into the next one, which is channeling, okay? Um, now, channeling, a lot of people think is somebody coming through and talking to you, okay? That is one part of it, all right? But it's different. Just channeling is information coming in, all right? Um, but it's technically a rough translation of the message because it's still coming through our mind, our ego, our thoughts, our likes, our dislikes, okay? Let's just say uh, one of my favorite things to use is sweet potatoes because I despise them, okay? All right, so let's just say that I'm working with you and I am channeling, you know, your parent, your mother, whatever. And so that you know that it's your mother, and you love sweet potatoes, she's going to say something about to let you know that it's really her, 
well now do you remember when i made that sweet potato pie and you kept sneaking in there eating on off of it okay all right when i start talking about that sweet potato pie my own thoughts in it is going to be do you remember when you did this oh you know and my face is going to make this face because i'm about uh, you know okay i'm going to try my best not to all right but she's going to be over here talking about how awesome this is and i'm just going to be like mm. okay can we, can, can we stop okay can we talk about something besides sweet potatoes because they're nasty to me okay because that that channeled in message okay it's not the person talking through here. Their message is coming in. I'm giving it out. But my own thoughts are going to kind of interfere. You know, it's kind of like when people interpret things like the Bible or whatever. Yeah, they, they change it up to match their own likes and dislikes and stuff. All right, same thing. All right. So channeling, the message is coming out, but it, it's not necessarily pure. Okay. It's not exactly the way it came out. You know. Kind of like when I kept telling the woman she had to shut her mouth. Well, yeah, that was straight out the way that they said it. But at the same time, I got to a point that I was like, you know, I wasn't feeling comfortable with that anymore. Okay. So now the other channeling is called embodiment. All right. That is where spirit comes in and takes over the body. Okay. So in the movie Ghost, where Whoopi um was a supposed to be a medium channeler of course she was a fake all right but because she was able to see patrick swayze she, you know, okay anyway moving on um she ended up getting the real gift okay and ghosts kept jumping in and out of her speaking to their loved ones okay that is embodiment another uh thing of embodiment uh, people that practice voodoo, santeria, and such, uh, and they, they call it being ridden when one of the loa or orishas actually takes over their body. Okay? This is embodiment of spirit. That means they come in and they speak through you. And yes, I have personally, well, I've actually experienced it, but we're not even going to go there right now. We're going to talk about the one that deals with this on a daily basis. Now, this woman, at one point was very sick okay there was times that she could barely talk because she didn't have enough air to speak right certain ones needed to talk to me about what was going on with her so they would take over and she could speak just fine okay and of course various accents it was really fun at times in fact i miss her being around uh because i really miss the way that uh, Obatala said my name. So <laughs> he's one of the few people who actually pronounces it correctly, you know, as Sherry. <laughs> and I really, really miss that. But anyway, so, but that is channeling that is embodiment, okay? When a spirit completely takes over your body and speaks through you, it will usually pretty much, it'll come through a lot as their own voice, okay? Depending on. And you're still here, but you kind of moved off down here somewhere. Most of the time, you can, you know, you're aware of what's going on. You can hear what's going on. Now, there were times when Loa's or Arisha's take over that the host has no clue, okay? They have no earthly idea what's going on. They don't know what happened during that period of time. It just really kind of depends, all right? Um, I choose to not allow that. Um, I. I've had it happen to me uh, when I was training. I'm not comfortable with it. Okay, yes, I'm a control freak, okay? I like staying in control of this. You know, I, I, they, they have been known to just pop in out of my mouth part, but nothing, not the full body takeover, okay? Um, I love them, all right, but I'm real funny about that part. Anyway, um, so it's not something that you just want to do, okay? I don't really recommend you being, unless it's just a natural gift and you take precautions, okay? I don't, and that should probably be a whole new video, but you, if you're somebody that this happens to, now, if you are a 
Vudon or Santeria practitioner and you're trained and you do all that, that I'm not talking about y'all. Okay, y'all know what the heck you're doing, or at least I hope you do. I'm talking about people that do readings for people and allow uh, the spirit of the person to come in. Okay? Be careful because I have known of people that do this and they don't take all the right precautions and they end up with a lot of illnesses, a lot of times illnesses of the person that died. Okay? So you need to be careful. And I just really don't advise people doing that one at all, allowing the embodiment of spirits. Okay? Uh, in other words, deceased people. I'm not talking about deity. Okay? I, I deal with invoking my goddess. That's another type of thing. Okay? And yes, I will allow her to speak through me. That's what I'm supposed to do. Uh, but once again, those are deities. All right? Just deceased people in general, I do not recommend it. I know some people just seem to have a natural gift. But if this is the case, even if you're a channeler, if you're one that allows spirits to come to you and speak, to you, through you, in any kind of way. Number one, once they know you can do it, they will drive you insane, okay? They will bombard you like what happened to Whoopi in the movie. If you hadn't seen it, go watch Ghost. Go, just go watch it, okay? Hey, if you have watched Ghost, click the like. If you hadn't, click it too. So anyway, um, it, it's just awesome and it's hilarious, okay? So, and whether you like her or not, you know, there's yeah, whatever about her nowadays, but she was awesome in that movie, and it's hilarious. And, hey, you get to look at Patrick Swayze, okay? <sighs> so, anyway, um, what I tell people that when they can see ghosts, and they, they know they can see them, and our spirits and stuff, and they talk to them and through them and whatever, so that you're not getting bombarded driving down the road or at work or any of these other things, okay? Because some of them are so exhausted because they can't even sleep because of them, okay? You set up a thing. You go, okay, when I sit down here and I light this candle and I light this incense or whatever you want to do, okay? Whatever, you, you know, works right for you. When I do this is when I will allow you to come to me with your information. One at a time. Line up. And when I'm done, I'm done, okay? So if you're still in line, I'm sorry, you come back next time, all right? And this is what you do. Allow yourself X amount of time, have your pad and pen handy, to jot down any notes that is whoever wanting somebody to have some information, okay? This is for those that get bombarded at different times, all the time, whatever, okay? Not for those that are sitting down with somebody. but have all this information, all right? And let them know, okay, you had your turn. And when you're done, you know, you don't wait until you're just so exhausted you can't do it anymore. Give yourself a certain amount of time and go, okay, I'm closing the door over here, snuffing out the candle, we're done. Until I say okay again, all right? And this is what you have to do for your own sanity and health and well-being. Okay, so and even if it's a situation that you are working as a medium and allowing them to come into you, you know, to speak to the person, number one, be for real. Don't be a fake. Mm, fakes piss me off. Okay, don't be a fake. You know, you either have the gift or you don't, or the curse, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, but be for real. Um. Don't and don't be overcharging people for shit either. Just sorry. Just don't be doing that. Now. Just don't be overcharging people for all these things, okay? All right. So anyway, even if you're doing that, you need to have a safety out to where they're trying to stay too long. Okay? Only allow so much enter and have a safety thing of X amount of time. It's exhausting, okay? It is exhausting. So you, you just want to be careful, all right? So, all right. All of that was channeling both parts of it, all right? So next we have precognition. This is foretell the future. Remember, in foretelling the future, okay, it is not 
necessarily set in stone. I tell people this all the time when I do readings, okay? Because halfway through, I had somebody one time, halfway through a reading says, oh, well, I, but I said over here that I just wouldn't, you know, I was going to leave the person or whatever because he's abusive. It doesn't matter what you said when I said this part in the reading. The cards are going to read based on your course of action at the time that you shuffled the cards. Okay? Whatever your plan was at the time, because it may show up either or if you're trying to make up your mind, but that's how that works, okay? So that means that this precognition, I get this information, okay? I tell you this information. It was based on what your plans were at the time I got the information, okay? For instance, I'm doing a reading. It says, um, you're going to have a wreck on your way to work tomorrow or sometime in the next week or something. I'm not real good at narrowing down to exact days a lot of times. So that means you change your routine so that it doesn't happen. It's not set in stone that it has to happen. It says, because every day you leave at 8.05 on the dot and you take this exact route. Okay? That means change that. Leave five minutes earlier, five minutes later, take a different route, whatever, for that whole week, maybe two to be on the safe side, okay? It means change your routine to make it not happen. It does not mean that the reading or the information was wrong. It means that it was there to allow you to make a change so this didn't happen, okay? So... You know, especially if it was like the last thing up here in the reading. Because now I don't have any cards telling me that you even survived it. Because it was the last thing in the reading. It wasn't like it was down here. Now you got all this stuff which tells me you have the choice. This is right here. So now that's a scary situation. So that means pay attention. Make the necessary changes. Okay? That's why we say that foretelling the future is not set in stone. Now, that being said... I have two ways that I allow my guides to show me death because I don't like seeing it. I don't like having to tell somebody. One is it can be avoided, hence the wreck. Okay. Number two, it is unavoidable. And if it's grandma or whoever, it's the it's showing me to tell you because you need to get over there and say your I love yous and do whatever it is you want to do so you don't have regret. So that means it's coming up in the next however much time, okay? So that's the only two ways that I allow them to show me. You know, one, it is avoidable. Two, it's going to happen. Make preparation, okay? So far, luckily, I've never, it's never been where it was the person, okay? Not exactly sure how we'll handle that one. Uh, well, hopefully, I never had to deal with that one. So far, it's always been somebody they needed to go see about. Or I take it back, I did see it when it, as a person. Because, when I fact, I had actually forgotten about this reading because it was a few years ago. Till the woman came in my store here a few weeks back, told me who she was, told me about the reading, and said that I had told her that if she didn't make whatever these changes were, she was going to die. Well, she didn't make the changes till it was almost too late. She almost died. She remembered my reading. And kind of at the last minute made a change that saved her life. And that's why she made it a point when she brought somebody else in because she knew that with what she had going on, I was real and I would help her. Okay. And I would tell her the truth. But I don't know how many times this woman thanked me for saving her life. It brought me to tears. I'm telling almost now. Um, because, you know, and, and it, but it meant a lot to me that she came back and let me know. Okay. So, yeah, I have had it where it was the person, but it was avoidable. It, once again, it fell under my number one rule, which is that it's avoidable. Okay. But it was about her. Okay. So, yes, getting this information can be tough. Getting, giving it out to the person can be tougher. All right. Because they don't always listen, all right? 
whether they listen or not, is not our fault and it's not on us. Okay? So remember that. All you can do is give the information as it's given to you. Okay? What the person chooses to do with that information is all on them. You know? We've done our job. Our job is not to fix their life. Our job is to give them the tools to fix it with the information that we're giving. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay. So, all right. Precognition. All right. You know, I think, you know, we've covered that. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Okay. All right. Okay. Next. Oh. Uh, Yes. Energy healing. In fact, I'm planning on doing a workshop on that as soon as I can get back use of my hand. I'm going to do a workshop here in my shop or in my building. Energy healing. And this is so, so important. And I will be teaching this in my class on it. I was a natural healer. Okay. Nobody taught me how to do this. I just naturally did it. Okay. Two different ways, both of which were very wrong, okay? One of them, I used my energy, you know? It worked, but I was exhausted, okay? Yeah, because it drained me, because I used my all of my energy to try to, you know, put healing energy into this person. It worked for them, but I was left drained, okay? And, and it's, that's never a good way to do it. The other is I had a tendency to take their pain or whatever. I would know I took it because, say, they had a headache. It would come through into my head. I'd have the headache. And then as far as I knew, I was sending it all out. Well, I'm not so sure that you ever get it all out, no matter how hard you try, okay? Because uh, I, I wonder sometimes if some of the issues I've had is because of stuff that I have taken from people and there was residue left. Okay, don't do either of those. Okay, learn a modality that is proper energy healing. That means you're channeling energy and directing it to someone. Okay, you can learn Reiki, you know, you can learn all sorts. My favorite that I do is called Quantum Touch. Okay, I, I don't get anything for talking about them. All right, I am a certified practitioner. And it is one of the best modalities, in my opinion. Um, it is, I'm going to say, probably one of the easiest to learn and do. Uh, I mean, I can teach people the basics of it, and because I think everybody should know at least some. I can't train people. I'm not a certified trainer. Couldn't afford it. It ain't cheap. But, you know... I can teach you the energy flow and stuff like that. So um, check into it if you want to get into energy healing, okay? Um, learn it. Learn the right way. Please don't do the other two. I promise you, it's not good, you know? Probably part of what's wrong with my hands, all right? Taking too much stuff, all right? So, but that is another one of the psychic abilities is doing energy healing okay all right next is astral projection all right now astral projection and astral travel are two different things okay astral projection is when you project out of your body okay you can be standing over there in that corner and looking down and seeing yourself you know this does tend to happen to people sometimes um, in the hospital especially in near-death situations or the pain is so severe that they just kind of come out of their body so that, you know, they ain't really paying attention to feeling all of that, right? Um, you, but that's, you're just projecting out of your body. That's all. You're just out here, okay? Um, you're, um, you're projecting your consciousness uh, you know, it's kind of the spirit thing. It's kind of when you're laying in bed at night, and you know, because it's ha you know that's when it happens to most people. You know, you can learn to astral project and travel. 
uh, I did do a video on astral travel. I'll try to remember to pop it up here. No promises. I'll try to remember. Um, but when you're laying in bed and you're starting to drift off, all of a sudden you do this jerk. And you're like, what the heck? Well, that's because you were starting to astral project, at least, if not travel. And your body went, no, get back here. Yeah. And then you're like, whoa. And that's why that jerk awake is, is you jerking your consciousness, okay, your spirit, your whatever, out of your body, okay, is trying to go out and do something. Or maybe somebody's pulling you out, which is another bad thing. Go watch that video on astral travel if any of that's happening to you, okay? Please. Yeah, it can be bad. So make sure that you're only doing this when you are actually wanting to do this, not something that just happens, okay? It tends to happen in our sleep. Uh, a lot of times dreams that seem really real and you went here or there, or whatever, you know, it's because you were traveling in your sleep. And a lot of times you'll wake up exhausted is all heck, okay? You're like, oh my God, I feel like I didn't sleep. I've just been working all night. Well, because you were. You were out traveling, okay? So um, get control over that if you don't have control over it and you're not able to do it when you want to. Best ways through meditation. Once again, I teach all that in the video on astral projection and safety with it, okay? But astral projection, astral travel, all of those things, you know, learn to have control over it so that uh, it doesn't just happen to you, okay? It's much safer that way. All right, next is uh, telepathy, okay? Uh, it's when you perceive others' thoughts, uh, thought forms. Um, it's like a collective consciousness sometimes even. Uh, you just kind of know things, all right? It is, you know, you're talking to someone and you can read their thoughts, all right? Um, you, you just, you know, you just simply are receiving all these messages. And, you know, um, you may get a lot from people, all right? You know, you could be where there's just a whole lot of people and you just have all, all of these things just kind of coming into your head, okay? It's not the feelings of everybody. It is the images or the thoughts. You know, this one's over there going, God, do you see what she's wearing? Ah, I wouldn't be caught dead in that. And you're looking around like, who, who's thinking that and who are they talking about, okay? They're talking about me? I don't know. All right. But you'll just, this stuff will just kind of like come in. All right. That's telepathy. All right. I know a lot of these things can kind of coincide and seem similar, but they're very distinct individual things. You, okay. So you may have a combination of a lot of them. Okay. Uh, you might be an empath. You may be clairvoyant. You may be clair, uh, sentient. You may be, have telepathy. Um, pre precognition, you know, you may have a combination of a lot of them, all right? It doesn't mean if somebody's talking to you about what your gifts are that you got to try to break it down to each individual one, okay? Doesn't, it doesn't matter. And it's really none of their business necessarily. You know, you can say, I, I see things, I hear things, you know, sometimes I just know things. Be done. The titles don't really matter. I've got the titles here to help you so that you can do more research on things that are resonating with you, okay? The things that I describe. And if that one is resonating with you, then go do more research on it. You know, get some more information to help you with the gift that you have. Then if you want to learn more about the other gifts, then do research on them too, okay? And if you decide you want to see if you have those or if you can develop them, by all means. Just remember, be careful what you ask for. You just might get it, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And some of these aren't always fun, okay? So there you go. Uh, some of the people that ended up in the loony bins way back in the day weren't actually crazy, okay? They weren't schizophrenic. They weren't any of those things. They had psychic abilities. But because nobody really knew anything about it, you were either possessed 
or you were crazy, okay? Because you see things that nobody else can see, you hear things, you know things, all that. So let's go lock you up in a padded room, okay? You're not crazy. I promise you, you're not crazy. It really exists, okay? Um, now, also, let me add in one more disclaimer. The uh, embodiment part of spirits coming in and all that kind of stuff, that is not the same thing as someone that has multiple personalities, okay? that That is something else entirely. That's not a psychic gift. That is something that is more on a medical side, and that's different, okay? So that's not the same thing as this. So just in case anybody got it confused, somebody whispered that to me that I needed to clear that up. So I assume there's somebody out there that maybe has that. And I wanted you to know that it's not the same thing. Okay. So, all right. Now, the last one on my list, as far as this goes, and we have some other things too, is automatic writing. Okay. Um, automatic writing is writing while channeling. Okay. So, it's, you end up in kind of a trance state. All right, because you're tra bleh, you're channeling a spirit. Okay, uh, there are some great people that do this. Okay, I can't think of their names right now. I, you, if you know me, you know I don't can't remember names. Okay, so anyway, so we have this person that is channeling someone. So they have this piece of paper, and they're writing. And this writing tends to go all over the paper. It ain't nice and neat like you normally write, I promise you. A lot of it looks like scribbles, okay? And they're just, because as the information comes in, it's, that's why it's called automatic writing. The information's coming in, and they're writing. I'm just writing, and writing, and writing, okay? The fun part is after you come out of the trance, you're trying to figure out what all this says, okay? Because it looks like, uh, a four-year-old just got a pen out and started scribbling everywhere, but there's words, there's information in there. You just had to figure out how to read it. I like reading the doctor's handwriting or something, okay? I've seen some of it before. I don't do that one, but I have seen it. All right, so, but that's what automatic writing is, okay? All right, so, how do you develop psychic abilities, okay? Now, we all know that for some people, it is very natural, okay? It's just something that happens. It's gifts that they have carried with them from past lives, okay? Because as you develop, okay, and then each, each life you come back and you have a tendency to carry these things with you and then get more. And that's why some people only have a little bit right now. Some people just naturally do all these things, okay? It doesn't mean that you can't start developing them so that when you come back in the next life, you just have them, okay? Now, there are some gifts that people have that others don't, and that's okay. Everybody doesn't have to have all the same gifts. Don't think you're being left out, okay? Most people that have a lot of the gifts sometimes wish they didn't have any of them. You know what? My daughter's one. So just, you know, accept it. And go on, okay? So, let's see. I'm getting to where I can't see right now, so pardon me. <clears throat> All right. Um, for, yeah, well, I kind of covered this. It, 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 it's the myth that says that only some people are special enough to have psychic abilities. You ain't no more special than nobody else just because you have psychic abilities, okay? You know, As I said, you can develop them. Some people, it comes more natural. Work with what you have, okay? Get that developed. Whatever or however many it is, get that developed. Get it to where you have control and understanding and all that of it, okay? Then, if you want to move on to having other abilities, you can. I mean, I have people come to my store and go, Oh, I want to be able to hear and see and feel everything. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> it's the first thing I tell them. No, you don't. They just want to blow open that third eye and all their senses and 
it will make you crazy. Okay. I mean, it really, it will make you crazy. Don't do that. Okay. So, all right. Now to work on developing your psychic abilities, the first thing you have to do is the same thing you have to do to do meditation. You have to quiet your mind. Okay. You have to get rid of what I call the monkey mind. Okay. I talked to you about this in the meditation video. Monkey mind is our brain's fear that if we're trying to meditate or trying to do anything, we're going to forget something. Okay. So, like I teach in the meditation video, get you a pad and pen. Okay, you're trying to quiet your mind, you're trying to relax, you're trying to focus. Don't forget you got to pick the kids up at school at 3 o'clock. Okay, well, it's only 11. I, kids, 3 o'clock, I'm good. Okay, here we go again. Almost out of milk. Don't forget to buy some milk. Milk. All right, here we go again. Trying to relax. You turn off the stove. If you have any doubt, go check. Come back. Stove taken care of. You know, and just keep doing this, okay? And the more you do this, the less monkey mind you'll have. Because eventually, your conscious and subconscious brains up here will go, Oh, she's got it. It's okay. She's not going to forget. We've been through this, okay? Quiet your mind. Okay? Number one step. Before you can do anything else, you have to learn to quiet your mind. Okay? Because you can't meditate. You can't tap into your abilities. You can't do anything till you learn to quiet your mind. Okay? That's number one. All right? Number two. Connecting with your body. Okay, because things are perceived in the body. It's how you respond to spirit. All right. Th these are all ways that you have to work on connecting, okay, with your body. You know, some people do yoga, drums. Oh, my God, especially African drums. I mean, you start playing that, and I'm like, uh, okay, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I'm out of here. History, I, I'll be over here dancing with those drums. You can talk to me all you want. You probably won't get through to me unless you just really yell maybe or something, okay? So you, you have to do this, all right? Close your eyes. Feel the music, okay? So that when we're looking at things with these eyes, okay, it just makes this whole different thing. All right, because we're depending on what we see. So the rest of our senses go. That's why a lot of times when people go blind, they're amazed at the sounds that they hear, the smells, all that stuff. They just become totally like, wow, this was here all along? Yeah, it was. But you saw everything, so you didn't pay attention. Okay, so start off with closing your eyes. Okay. Put on that music. Let yourself sway with it, okay? Go with that beat. Feel it all throughout your body, okay? That's you connecting with your body, okay? You're hearing it. You're feeling it. You know, the whole thing, okay? That's step two, all right? You have to do these things in order. Don't think you can skip the you know step four and everything's gonna be okay. All right, you did step one. Master step one before you go to step two. All right, you know step two might help you master step one. Maybe those two. Yeah, you might can you know while you're working on step one, you may can go to step two, but don't be skipping. All right, you need to master each one. All right, so now <clears throat> you need to focus on your five senses. Okay, because once again, like I said, because you'll be they will be amplified and it'll be easier to get to that sixth sense 
which is our psychic ability, okay? But, as I said, actually it's only four of them, because we want to take out the eyes for, for this part of this, okay? Because the eyes get in the way. They just really, really do, because we depend on them way too much for everything, okay? So, once again, meditation helps, but you got to get that step one down. You got to meditate. Step two, I'm going to help you with meditation. So let's do all this. So that step two and step three, you can kind of combine in there, because I already told you about it, you know, that you're using these other senses, okay? Get all of them. Feel the energy of the music that's playing that you're listening to and feeling in your body while you're dancing with your eyes closed. Make sure you got a space that you're safe. Okay, when you're doing this, don't be tripping over furniture. My disclaimer. Okay, for those people that don't think about it. Okay, you got that ottoman, that coffee table sitting out there, and you just getting all with it, jiving over here, and boom. All right, we don't want to do that. Okay, don't do that. All right, so then, all right, number four, you need to intend, all right, to develop your psychic abilities. How much do I talk to you about intention? Everything you do is guided by your intention. Okay? So you have to say it. I am doing this because I intend to develop my psychic abilities. Okay? You state it. You put it out there. Okay? I am quieting my mind because I intend to develop my psychic abilities. I intend to tap into my sixth sense, okay? I am connecting with my body. I am flowing with this music because I intend to develop my psychic abilities, okay? I intend to contact and develop my sixth sense, okay? Each of these steps state that intent, okay? Because remember, what you put out into the universe is what you get back. So if I keep saying with everything I'm doing, my intent is to develop my psychic abilities. And if you want to state which psychic abilities within that sixth sense you want, then do that as well. You can get more specific. Because maybe you don't want to be flooded with all of them at once. I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Okay? Because you will want a padded room, probably. So, say, you know, you want clairvoyance. Okay? Then that's, you know, because you want to see the things, all right? Then you state, my intent is to develop my psychic ability clairvoyance. All right? It's fine. All right, you can be more specific and do baby steps. It doesn't matter, as long as you're putting the intent out there. Okay, so my battery died in the middle of whatever it was I was saying, so I'll try to get back to it as best I can. Don't know, because as things are flowing, it just happens. Okay, so anyway, I know I was talking about intent. All right, so the most important thing is make sure that as you're going through all of this, that you're stating your intent, okay? to access and open up this particular psychic ability, okay? Uh, or your sixth sense. Sixth sense. There we go. Okay, so um, work on these steps, okay? Um, <clears throat> sorry if it just kind of trailed off from whatever I was saying, because like I said, I had to go get a power cord. Anyway, all right. So, you know, there are different things you can say, okay? Um, you know, like I said, it is my intent to do this. <clears throat> you could even say something like, I am ready and willing to open uh, my development of my psychic abilities, okay? Or whatever version of that you want to say, all right? Try to make it say something a little better, but it's here, maybe, somewhere? Okay, anyway. But basically, you know, it's just that you're readying yourself. You know, I am ready and willing 
to open myself up and develop my psychic abilities. Okay? Because you got to be open to it. And for those of you that already have them and wish you could close them, I'm sorry. <laughs> Learn to use them the way that you're supposed to. And then you won't want to get rid of them. Okay? You know, it's like I tell people. I don't often see. There are times I really wish I did. Okay? I mean, I do sometimes. If something wants me to see it, I'll see it. But there are times that, you know, yeah, I wish I could see things more. There are also times I'm glad I can't. All right? Because I remove nasty attachments off of people and out of people. Okay? Considering the fact that I have to pull them out with my hands, and yes, I can feel them, I am very thankful most of the time that I can't see them. Because I've had people around when I've done this that could see, and they were like, oh my God, how did you take that out of that person and, say, and hold it in your hands? Didn't you see what it looked like? No, I didn't. Thank you for sharing. What? Okay. <laughs> so, because I'm like, no, I, I couldn't. I do remember one that I took out because I mean, I could feel them and I talked to them, you know, and everything as I'm sending them back to wherever the heck they came from forever. But I, it was a large one and I could actually feel arms and legs kind of like doing this as I had this in my hands. And I was like, oh, I'm glad I can't see you. <laughs> but then again, sometimes I kind of wish I could go, yeah, I see you ugly, but you know, don't care. All right. So yeah, sometimes, you know, even that might be fun, but you know, I'm thankful for the gifts that I have. If I meant to see something, I see it. Okay. Um, I, I've just always kind of been on the fence about that one, mainly because of some of the things that I do within my job and helping people. Okay. So, but anyway, once again, this is just things that you need to do. Um, you need to also don't let religion or religious practices stand in your way. Okay, because there are some religions that say that it's all of the devil, that it's not really a gift, it's the devil, blah, 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 blah. My great grandfather was told that crap because that family was all Pentecostal and he could make tables talk and walk and all kinds of stuff. And it wasn't a trick table because he could do it with any of them at any time. Okay, so don't let that tell you that it's something bad. It's not, it is a gift. Okay. If you have these abilities or you develop your abilities, it's a gift. Yes, it can feel like a curse, but it is a gift from source, deity, whatever. Okay. And it's your right. Okay. It is your right to get and have these abilities to help you evolve up. Okay. As we do this, um, you can connect with spirit without religion. I say often, if we were all more spiritual and less religious, everybody could get along. You know, it's kind of like all the race wars. Take color out of it and we all get along. But letting government and organized religion and all these things, you know, stir the pot and create discord where there isn't any. Okay? Because that's what they do. You know, there was a thing that I read this morning on Facebook. And it said, if you take black ants and red ants and put them in a jar, they get along just fine. But if you give that jar a big shake, they start killing each other. Okay? Because each thinks the other is what's, you know, causing chaos in the, in the homestead there. People need to quit looking at each other as the cause and look at who's shaking the jar. Okay? What are they trying to hide? What are they trying to cause? Okay? With stirring that pot or shaking that jar. Okay? It's a really great analogy. I love it. I had to share it. So, anyway. The other thing that's really important for all of this is having self-confidence. You have to believe in yourself, okay? You have to believe in your abilities. That's why I tell people, you know, when they're given some kind of information 
and they don't know where it's directed or what to do with it, write it down. Just write it down. Some people have uh, precognitive dreams, okay? So I tell them, write it down, date it, okay? Write down everything that you remember. That way, when it actually happens, you can write down what actually happened and when, okay? Compare it with what you saw. It helps you to learn how to interpret the information given, whether it's through dreams or whatever, whichever of these things, okay? And it gives you the self-confidence that the information that you're getting is true, okay? What things maybe mean something a little different? You know, maybe you see saw a lot of the color red, and red is your anger color like it is mine, and therefore in your, it, you perceived it as everyone was angry. Well, no, everyone was just wearing red, okay? Maybe they all worked at Target or something. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, but by writing down what you saw or the information given, however you got it, writing down what actually transpired, okay, and the dates are important because it tells you how long from the time you saw it or got the information to when it actually happened, okay? So that way, if something really important comes up, you know a timeline. Some people don't get it till it is happening. They get the information while it's happening, okay? That's when you work on that particular ability more to give you some space in there so that maybe you can help a situation. Sometimes we're not supposed to help the situation, okay? Sometimes that person is meant to die. You know, it's kind of like the movie Final Destination. And sometimes the other death can be worse than what the first one would have been, okay? So that's why sometimes we're not given the information enough ahead of time, okay? You maybe have the dream that this car wreck happened and so-and-so died while it happened. And when you wake up, you find out that it just happened, okay? And, you know, and yeah, you start beating yourself up. Why couldn't I get the information yesterday so I could have warned them, blah, blah, because you weren't supposed to. Okay, you simply have an ability that gives you the information as it's happening. Okay, remember we talked about that. So don't blame yourself because you weren't meant to stop it. Okay, it wasn't one of those leave five minutes earlier, later, take a different route so you don't have to wreck. Okay, it was meant to happen. So don't beat yourself up because you see things, hear things, know things, whatever, and you weren't able to get the information in time to stop it. You weren't supposed to, okay? But still, you write down the information, and that helps you to know that you're getting truthful information, though, that builds your self-confidence, okay? That in and of itself is really important, okay? Having that self-confidence helps you to know that when you get information, it is correct, so that if you get information that didn't happen right now, you know, you know, that means that you're supposed to be able to help the person, okay? I hope this makes sense. Um, if you need some more clarification on something, hey, that's what the comments are for down there, and I'll be glad to try to describe, you know, explain something a little better, you know, uh, do an extra video, something, okay? So, um, but Try not to let your gift scare you. Fear blocks it. It just does. Um, fear freezes you up, okay? Fear can be disabling in and of itself. So understand your gifts. Respect your gifts. Build on them if you choose, okay? Don't have to. This isn't homework that says you got to do it. The same for those of you that want to. Okay, I've given you some steps here to kind of help you. Research some more on all these different abilities. Like I said, I'll post them all up, you know, the names up here for you so that you got the spellings and all that. And, you know, research more and understand them more. Okay. You know, and once again, like I said, I hope this helps you. Hopes, hopefully, this will help you to be a little calmer about some of them because I know it can be overwhelming. Okay, I know this, but just know you're not alone. There are many people out here in this world that have these gifts. Okay, there are many people out here in this world that want more of them. There's many that don't want them at all. 
Okay. Just know they're not of the devil. They're not evil. They're not any of those things. They are gifts. All right. You're given those gifts for a reason. Whether it's to help yourself, help family, help friends, help people in general. Okay. So try not to think of it as a curse. Think of it as a blessing and learn how to deal with it. Okay. Learn how to put it all in its place and make it all work. So. If I can help you, I'm here. If you hadn't already clicked all the buttons, please do that for me. Okay? I can't click right now. So click it all and leave me comments. Let me know. And hey, share me some love down there. Okay? And share this. I know there's so many people out there that need this information. Okay? And my, my views are like tiny. So that means I know not enough people are getting access to my videos. All right? So need YouTube to get them pushed out there. Need you to share them with people. Uh, share them on your Facebook, wherever. I don't care where you share it. You got my permission, okay? To share it out there. You know, I make these videos to try to help you. All of you, okay? And I can't help everybody if people don't have access and know that it exists, okay? So please do this for me. It means a lot. Um, let, help me to share the love, okay? Because you know that even if you're feeling down and think nobody loves you, I do. I got you. Can I make a heart? A eh, little bit. There it is. Sort of. Okay. <laughs> I tried. Anyway, y'all all have a wonderful and blessed day. Remember, you have abilities. You have gifts. You are important. You are enough. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not, okay? Just remember that Lady Starfire here loves you, all right? So until the next time, everyone have a wonderful, blessed day. Do your homework, okay? And bless you.